Hello everyone, this is Sarita, working as the assistant professor in the department of ECE, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. To today's session, I am going to explain about at, um, optical amplifier. In this, we are having different types of amplifiers are there. So, one type is EDFA, EBM doped fiber amplifier. EBM doped fiber amplifier. Why we go for this uh, EDFA uh, means in this, uh, when we go for transmits the information from source to destination, medium is uh, optical fiber. So, in our optical communication, the medium is optical fiber. In this optical fiber, it consisting of core and cladding. So, in the optical fiber, the main uh, device is uh, core and cladding. In this, core is uh, doped with, here, core is uh, doped with rare earth, rare earth ions. So, here, core is doped with rare earth ions means uh, we can transmit the information longer distance. In this EDFA, uh, it works on the principle of stimulated emission of photons. So, means uh, stimulated emission of photons means uh, in this laser diode, your optical source is laser diode. In EDFA works on a C and in this we are using C and L band of frequencies. So, with the use of these bands we are using in our telecommunication. So, it in here it is a integrate, integrated part of long haul data transmission and optical amplifier is able to amplify optical signal directly without need to convert the signal into electrical one before amplifying which is also the most prominent feature. So, here in this we are using, this is basically used for our telecommunication applications. Here in this uh, EDFA optical amplifier boosting optical signals more effectively, boosting of optical signals more effectively. In this amplifier we are using denser wavelength division multiplexing. So, dense wavelength division multiplexing with the use of this multiplexing, we can transmit the information for longer distance with the use of C and L band of frequencies. So, when being transmitted over longer distance, the optical, sig uh, optical signal has to be amplified many times in between owing to the signal loss from fiber attenuation connectivity. Connectivity losses, fiber splicing losses. So, here EDFA uh, optical amplifier boosting optical signals more effectively. In this, uh, before an optical amplifier is inverted, the optical signal has to be first converted into electrical signal amplifier and then converted into back uh, an optical signal again. So, again, it converted into uh, light energy. So, the process is very complicated and expensive. To overcome such a problem, to overcome such a problem, so first it converted into electrical to light energy, then increase the signal strength again, light into electrical. Uh, first, uh, light energy can be converted into electrical form after am amplification. That electrical signal can be converted into light energy. This is uh, some complicated and expensive. So, to overcome such problems, the optical fibers uh, uh, has since been invented to amplify signals directly. So, su such that, so this process is significantly cheaper and started fiber optic revolutions. So, there are several types of optical fiber optic amplifiers there. So, semiconductor optical amplifiers. So, semiconductor ap optical amplifiers and Raman optical amplifiers and brilliant optical amplifiers and irbidium, irbidium doped fiber amplifiers. So, in that uh, we are uh, now I am explaining about the uh, IRBM doped fiber amplifier. So, in this EDFA amplifier, a uh, widely used in this case, we are using wavelength division multiplexing system. So, with the use of this wavelength division multiplexing, number of advantages are there. So, number of advantages are there. So, that's the that's the reason that's why we are using wavelength division multiplexing in our EDFA amplifier. So, in this wavelength division multiplexing, we are having two types, dense wavelength division multiplexing and coarse wavelength division multiplexing. So, when we go for dense wavelength division multiplexing, in that we are using pre-amplifier, booster amplifier and line amplifier. The same technique we are using in our EDFA amplifier, we can increase the signal strength. We can increase the signal strength here. 
it uses the erbium doped fiber as an optical amplification medium to directly enhance the signal to directly enhance the signal means increase the signal strength here so edf is commonly used to compensate for fiber losses in long haul optical communication the most important characteristic is, the, is that it can amplify multiple optical signals simultaneously so in this we are having multiple optical signals so multiple optical signal each signal has its own wavelength and frequencies with the use of wavelength division multiplexing with the use of wavelength division multiplexing we can multiply all the signals and we can transmit uh, with the use of only one channel one op optical fiber cable afterwards we are using and uh, demultiplexing de technique what is the information we are transmitting that is we are receiving across this uh, output session and uh, generally it is used in the c band and l band nearly the range is from 1530 to 1565 nanometers 1530 to 1565 nanometers in this edfa the basic print it works on the principle of stimulated and emission so here the absorption started here 980 nanometers only so the pumping the laser pumping starts at 980 nanometers only so here but it it also should be noticed that edfa cannot amplify wavelengths shorter than 1525 nanometers so observe here attenuation and wavelength here the wavelengths are 0 1300 1400 1500 to 1600 but here is optical fiber in edf case we are using the band is c and l band so with the use of this band of frequencies it is applicable for telecommunication so how does an EDFA works means the basic structure of EDFA consisting of length of erbium doped erbium doped fiber a pump laser and wavelength division multiplexing com combiner so in this we are using uh, wavelength channel so here selective frequency channel so here selective frequency channel here laser pumping so here in this case here it is input signal here it is input signal and here laser pumping here laser pump so with the use of uh, uh, frequency selective carrier it is our in optical fiber so number of signals are combined here in with the use of this wavelength division multiplexing and with the use of optical fiber so here this is our output signal so in this purpose in this purpose we are using co-directional and anti-clock clockwise co-directional and anti-clockwise direction and dual in three ways we are using this edfa this edfa works on in three ways in one direction only we can transmit the information another one uh, anti-clockwise direction also we can transmit the signal and both set transmission and reception is possible in uh, two sets so this is the basic working of edfa so here the logo here signal pumping uh, the basic structure of an edfa consists of a length of uh, edfa pump laser pump laser is nothing but with input signal here laser pump starts at 980 nanometers only for combining the signal and pump wavelength input signal and pump wavelength both are combined with the help of wavelength division multiplexing and the signal propagates simultaneously through the erbium doped fiber so here observe the picture here in this uh, image in this image input signal that is 1500 nanometers erbium doped optical amplifier so he, this is the doped level in this uh, doping purpose we are using the core is doped with rare earth so rare earth ions the core is doped with the rare earth ions and this is our output signal here optical pump starts with 900 nanometers only 900 nanometers so here um, here observe here in this energy so energy levels here 900 nanometers So here signal absorption here 
फोर्टीन हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टीन हंड्रेड एंड एटी नैनोमीटर्स हियर सिग्नल ऑब्जर्वशन सो एमिशन स्पॉन्टेनियस अकर्ड एट फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी नैनोमीटर्स हियर इज स्टिमुलेटेड एमिशन एंड ऑब्जर्वशन अकर्ड एट द वेब लेंथ ऑफ फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी नैनोमीटर्स हियर सो ऑब्जर्व हियर इयर इनपुट सिग्नल इज फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी नैनोमीटर्स इनपुट सिग्नल द ऑप्टिकल फॉर्म स्टार्ट ऑब्जर्वशन इट इज स्टार्ट हियर नाइन हंड्रेड एंड एटी नैनोमीटर्स एंड सिग्नल ऑब्जर्वशन इयर फोर्टीन हंड्रेड एंड नैनोमीटर एंड आफ्टर पंपिंग आफ्टर पंपिंग द सिग्नल मैक्सिमम इट इज स्टिमुलेटेड एंड ऑब्जर्व एट फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी नैनोमीटर सो दिस इज अवर आउटपुट सिग्नल so the optical signal such as a 1550 nanometer signal enters the edf amplifier from the input edf amplifier from the input here the wavelength of the signal is 1550 nanometers and combined with a 980 nanometers so 980 nanometers is nothing but our pumping the laser starts a pumping at 990 nanometers and after pumping the here the edf works on works of the basic principle is stimulated emission of photons so stimulated emission of photons observed at the wavelength of 1550 nanometers here the signal and the pump laser pass through a length of Fiber doped with the ABM ions. So here, EDF uses the ABM doped fiber as an optical amplification medium. So here, the fifteen hundred and fifty nanometer signal is amplified to interact through interaction with the doped ABM ions. So here, ABM ions, ABM ions are nothing but the core. The core is. Here the wave is trans propagated within the core only. So whatever the information, whatever the information is transmitted within the core, within the core only. So here our input signal, our input signal, the wavelength is fifteen hundred and fifty nanometers. The wavelength is fifteen hundred and fifty nanometers, and here laser pumps starts here. The laser pumping starts at eight nine hundred and Eighty nanometers and both are combined. So these ions, the pumping combined in with the use of wavelength division multiplexing and transmitted within the optical fiber only. Within the optical fiber only. So this action amplifies a weak optical signal to a higher power, affecting a boost in the signal strength. so this is the basic block diagram basic diagram of uh, dense wavelength division multiplexing so edf amplifier types types for dense wavelength division multiplexing connectivity in this transmitter here transmitter we are using between this here we are using optical sources so optical sources are nothing but led or laser led or laser With the use of this booster amplifier, this booster amplifier is connected to the end of the transmitter. End of the transmitter, we are connecting this booster amplifier, and end of the receiver, we are connecting to the preamplifier. Between this, between this transmitter and receiver, we are connecting inline amplifier. So this line amplifier, we are connecting eighty to hundred kilometers of the optical fiber. For example, the optical fiber length is. Thousand kilometers each eighty to hundred kilometer distance. We are using these line amplifiers. With the use of these line amplifiers, we can increase the signal strength. We can improve the signal strength. Means we can transmit the information to the longer distance. We can transmit the information to the longer distance here across the end of the transmitter. We are connecting the booster amplifier, and end of the receiver we are connecting the. pre amplifier between these we are using the line amplifier so here between this booster amplifier this line amplifier the information is passed through this optical fiber with this optical fiber only so after here it is optical fiber here also optical fiber between these two optical this is the continuous path between this we are using line amplifiers so some signal is 
low level then with the use of this line amplifier we can boost the signal we can boost the, increase the signal strength again here transmits the information when it reaches ait 200 meter kilometers then again we are using line amplifier with the help of this line amplifier increase the signal strength again we are transmitting so with the help of this line amplifier we can increase the signal strength and we can transmit the information to the longer distance across the transmitter and we are using booster amplifier and across the receiver and we are using the pre amplifier so this is the basic diagram for dense wavelength division multiplexing. So in this booster amplifier, a booster amplifier operates at the transmission side of the link designed to amplify the signal channels existing the transmitter to the level required for launching into, into the fiber link. So it is not always required a single channel links but it essential part of in dense wavelength division multiplexing in this we are using nearly 40 channels so where the multiplexer attenuates the single channel so here it has high input power high output power and medium optical gain so the common types are 20 dbm output for c band and 40 channels and 26 db gain booster edfk so here 16 db output c band 40 channels 14 db gain booster edfk and so on in this we are using the common types here 20 dbm so 20 dbm and output c band the channels are 40 channels so 26 dbm gain booster so it is increased the gain is 26 dbm and 16 db output c band 40 channels and 14 db gain booster ADF here in line amplifier so line amplifier is generally set at intermediate points along the transmission link in dense wavelength division multiplexing link to overcome the fiber transmission and other distribution losses to overcome the uh, transmission losses if without using this line amplifiers if the signal is breaks in middle of the optical fiber only so with the use of this line amplifier increase the signal strength, boost the signal strength and it can transmit it to some more distance so for that purpose we are using this line amplifiers between the optical fiber so in line amplifiers the line in line edfk is designed for optical amplification between two network nodes on the main optical link two networks nodes means transmitter and receiver between this transmitter and receiver we are using the we are connecting these uh, uh, line amplifiers so in line amplifier edfk are placed every 80 to 100 kilometers to ensure that the optical signal level remains above the noise floor so in future medium to low input power high output power high optical gain and low noise figure and pre amplifier operates at the receiving end of a tensor wavelength division multiplexing link. The pre amplifier is used to compensate for losses in a demultiplexer near the optical receiver. Near the optical receiver. Here, pre amplifiers are placed at the end of the receiver. At the end of the receiver. So uh, placed before the receiver at the end of the dense wavelength reduction multiplexing link pre-amplifiers uh, EDFA works to enhance the signal level before the photo detector takes place and here across the receiver across the receiver means the receiving section is not this is the receiver is nothing but here is information it is in the form of light only so when we go for photodiodes so when we go for when we go for photodiodes, so photodiodes are nothing but uh, before this photodiodes, we are using this uh, pre amplifier because of increase the signal strength, whatever the signal we require, uh, the signal strength we can increase the, with the use of uh, this uh, pre with the use of this pre amplifier. Afterwards, the information is received to the photo detector this photo detector the light falls on this photo detector whatever the energy is uh, whatever the energy is in falls on this photo detector if 
proportionality of electric energy produced that is that is the basic operation of this photo detector in that we are using pn pin i avalanche photo detector so here hence improving the receiver sensitivity so why we are using before this photo detector we are using pre amplifier means we can increase the improving the receiving receive sensitivity it has relatively low input power medium output power and medium gain so what are the advantages of this edfa means edfa has high pump power utilization here less than 50% edfa is directly and simultaneously amplify a wide wavelength band and here it is in the region of 1550 nanometer region with a relatively flat gain and here also improves improved by gain flattering optical filters so here the gain excess of 50 db edfa features low noise figure suitable for long haul applications so it is a deployment deployment is relatively easier to realize and more affordable compared with the signal amplification methods So, what are the drawbacks in EDFA? Size of size of the EDFA amplifier is not small. So, here semiconductor optical amplifier and Raman amplifier EDFA with a typical size in ten meters long. So, it is difficulty to integrate with the other semiconductor device. So, here dropping channels can give rise to errors in surviving in surviving channels. dynamic control of amplifiers is necessary so here what is edfa and how it do, how it will works means edfa works to directly amplify the any input optical signal eliminate the need to convert signal into electrical domain thus offering a potential to reduce the bandwidth the transport and cost and here the fiber limits the reach of a non amplified fiber span approximately it is 200 kilometers here wide area purely optical network cannot exist without an optical amplifier so here in edfa amplifier here 1550 nanometer it is our input signal isolator means it is in only one direction with the use of isolator it directs the signal so way of propagation so with the use of isolator if the wave is propagated in the same one direction and with the use of wavelength division multiplexing here the pumping here already i explained this laser here the laser pumping so laser pumping starts at 900 nanometers only so why we are using this laser pumping means in this edfa EDFA works on the principle of stimulated emission of photons. So then, with the use of laser, with the use of laser, it pumping the signal. The pumping signal starts uh, with the velocity, with the wavelength of ninety hundred and nine hundred and eighty nanometers. This uh, laser pumping signal, like nine hundred and eighty nanometer signal, and our input signal, fifteen hundred and fifty nanometer. Those sig two signals, these two signals are. combine here wave, wavelength division multiplexing technique so with the use of this technique two signals are combined here edfa here long period granting so here edfa fiber so in this we are using in this in this between this we are using dense wavelength division multiplexing in this we are using booster amplifier booster amplifier and um, pre amplifier and between here we are using line amplifier line amplifier so here we we are using booster amplifier it is connected end of the transmitter and end of the receiver we are connecting the here it is connected to the end of the receiver before receiver we are connecting and here line amplifier is connected to the middle of the optical fiber afterwards here isolator it directs the signal 
and here we are getting our signal output. So this is the basic EDFA configuration. This is the basic EDFA configuration. So here the basic form of EDFA consists of a length of EDFA. Here wavelength division with the use of wavelength division multiplexing combining the input signal and pumping wavelength so that they can propagate simultaneously through the EDF and most common configuration of EDFA is forward pumping configuration using here forward pumping configuration using 900 nanometers pump energy. So which offers the best overall design with respect to performance and cost adopter here. So observe here in uh, EDFA amplifier. So this is the basic structure of uh, this is the basic structure of wavelength division denser wavelength division multiplexing so here in this we are using transmitter 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 each signal has wavelengths are lambda 1 lambda 2 up to lambda n multiplexing with the use of multiplexer and post amplifier and before this is nothing but transmitter and this is nothing but receiver and after transmitter and we are using post amplifier and across the receiver and we are using the Pre amplifier in line amplifier, we are connecting this uh, <laughs> middle of this optical fiber. Here it is the line amplifier. So, here booster for 10 gigabits point to point connection up to 170 kilometers. So, the distance of optical transmission system can be extended by using EDFA. Three different EDFA types can be used depending on the uh, required distance and existing locations. So here simply by putting a booster optical amplifier at the beginning of a dense wavelength division multiplexing link up to 170 km can be accomplished in a point to point connection. So next one is booster for 10 gigabits per second point to point connection up to 170 km here. The distance of optical transmission system can be extended by using EDFA. So here, the here depending on the booster amplifiers and at the beginning, the link is connected to the 172 kilometers, 170 kilometers. So observe here the optical amplifier in EDFA here, uh -huh. dense wavelength division multiplexing here location A, here location B. Here we are connecting, this is one booster amplifier. Here also booster amplifier, we are connecting this booster amplifier depending on location, depending on the length of the fiber, we are connecting here up to 170 kilometers. Observe here, here 1 GB first switch and second, uh, third signal and fourth signal. So these are all switches, so up to 40 channels we are using here. So here these all channels are combined with the use of dense wavelength division multiplexing and with the use of booster amplifier here, the booster amplifier is connected up to 170 kilometers between this. So this is the total length of the optical fiber. This booster amplifier is connected to the 172 kilo, 170 kilometer distance. So without in line location, without in line location. Here it is location B. Here it is location B. In this, uh, uh, what by using the demultiplexer, with the use of this demultiplexer again split the signals here. So 40 channels into one here we are receiving the 40 channels again. And preamplifier ensures up to 250 kilometers reach without any inline amplifier. So as the booster amplifier set at the beginning extend the link reach up to 170 kilometer with the additional use of a Pre-amplifier at the end of transmission, the achievable distance to entire can be increased up to 250 kilometers. So, here 200 kilometers. So, here we are observing this is location 1, this is location B. So, in this we are connecting the boost and pre, booster and pre-amplifier. Here also booster and pre-amplifier. So, transmission and reception. Here we are using up to 200 kilometers. So, with the use of this amplifier, we can transmit the data up to 200 kilometers. And a single line, single inline amplifier per 
400 kilometer transmission even with 100 gigabits per second so installing an edfa at one repeater site uh, a distance up to 400 kilometers can be realized and this can be further extended if more repeaters repeater sites are used to place optical line amplifier so all three all three types of amplifiers are already designed to support 100 gigabits per second bandwidth for realizing up to 1000 kilometers in point to point connection. So here the purpose of multiple repeater sites and forward error correction integrated in the used optic user optics are required. So observe here in this line amplifier the lo location Z in a single line amplifier with the use of this line amplifier, we can transmit information up to 400 kilometers. So here, with the here, this is the channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four. We can combine this uh, all channel with the use of dense wavelength diffusion multiplexer, and we can use this booster and preamplifier across the transmitter section and across the receiver side. Between this, we are using this line amplifier. With the use of inline amplifier, we can transmit the information up to 400 kilometers. So, in overall, EDFA is used to boost intensity of optical signals. It has a fiber whose core is heavily doped with erbium ions and it works based on the concept of a stimulated emission and it operates in C band that is 1530 to 1560 nanometers. And L band, remember these points, uh, this C band and L band is basically used in our telecommunication. So, in telecommunication, the frequency ranges are 1530 to 1560, and in L band also 1570 to 1610 nanometers. So, here EDFA operates in the frequency bands are C and L. The C band range is 1530 to 1560, and L band range is 1572. 1610 nanometers so why we go for erbium means the ions here so erbium ions are rare earth ions so we are representing with er power 3 have quantum levels allowed that to be then to be stimulated to emit in the wavelength is 1540 band which has lowest power loss in silica based fibers so erbium quantum levels also allow is to be it to be excited by a signal at other 918 nanometers or 1580 nanometers so which has highest loss in silica based fiber so here the overall points here the here working of edfa the laser pump energy at uh, 980 nanometers or 1480 nanometers high energy and weak signal mixed by wavelength division multiplexing or wavelength selective coupler and erbium ions absorbed energy by laser pumping get excited to higher level so with the use of this laser pumping the input signal levels can be energized with the use of this laser pumping this laser pumping starts the way with the wavelength of 980 nanometers so here then stimulated absorption and stimulated emission will amplify weak signal so what are the applications here it is high capacity and speed optical communication system and longer distance we can transmit it and optical fiber subcarrier network and in this we are using wavelength division multiplexing uh, it is basically used in our you know, antenna television and CATV systems. Uh, in uh, advantages are uh, in this we are using C and L band and intensity to light polarization static, high gain, no distortion at high bit rates, immunity to cross stack. So immunity to cross stack means in that we are using pre-amplifier and boost amplifier, line amplifier. With the use of those amplifiers in that we are using filters also. With the use of filters we can remove the um, we can remove the noise components and the distortion rates also very no distortion at high bit rates. Bit rates are high means the distortion is also reduced and speed is also increases. So independent of bit rate.
so disadvantage see pump laser is necessary so pumping of laser diode is very very uh, compulsory here need to use gain equalizer for multi stage amplification and difficulty to integrate with the other components so in this uh, edfa so the basic basic advantages are um, commercially available in c, c and l bands here the wavelengths are when we go for any c and l band the wavelengths we are representing here so here 1530 nanometers to 1560 nanometers and l band is 1570 to 1610 nanometers so this is the uh, basic operation of edfa applications advantages and drawbacks of edfa in this um, uh, one more it is link power budget so how to calculate the link power budget so in in our link power budget we need to consider we need to consider uh, in our optical communication we are using transmitter and receiver so transmitter receiver so what are the basic blocks involved in our in our edfa means uh, here we are using laser or led laser or led so this is nothing but connector so this is transmitter and between these we are connecting to the splices so we are connecting splices here we are connecting this is connector across this connector we are connecting to the photodiodes so here source side we are using laser led across the receiver side we are using pn pin and avalanche photodiode so in this we are using what are the losses are occur in this basically the losses are connector so here the total loss we are representing here so so how we can loss means connector loss connector loss plus in this these are nothing but splices splices the length of the optical fiber we are representing with l we are representing with l here connector loss plus splices loss and plus transmitter loss plus receiver loss plus system margin system margin here connector loss here connector loss we are representing with lc is nothing but connector loss plus here splices loss lsp splices loss and transmitter loss and receiver loss uh, we are representing transmitter loss receiver loss across the transmitter side we are having some uh, across the source side and pr so here ps across the power loss in across the source power loss in across the receiver and another loss is system margin system margin here the system margin we are 6 db it is a considerable so 6 db loss is the considerable here so here connector the total loss is nothing but connector loss and splices loss here we are across the transmitter side we are connecting one connector receiver side we are connecting another connector and here splices splices with the use of this splices is nothing but when we need to increase the length of the optical fiber with the use of splicing technique we can join together so uh, optical fibers we are joining with the use of this splicing techniques with the connection also we are having different types of losses are there so how many splices we are using so how many splices we are using that is we are representing with n n equal to l by small l minus 1 so number of splices we are using here means for example here the length of the connector here it is 10 kilometers 10 kilometers means n equal to 10 by 10 by 2 minus 1 so in this case we are having for example in this we are using two splices means so 2 pi minus 1 means 4 so number of splices we required here 
so here number of connectors we are representing here 2 into lc so connectors we are connecting across the source side and across the receiver side two connectors are uh, we are using and uh, power source what is mean by total power so total power uh, total loss we are representing with uh, output by input so output by input the total loss we are representing here pt equal to power total loss is ps plus pr so pt is the total power equal to source power plus receiver power is nothing but our total loss and here the system margin here is considerable up to 6 db 6 db so here based on this based on these parameters we are calculating the link power budget so when we go for in rise time budget and in in this case here we are representing the losses in in terms of dbs only the loss we are considering in terms of dbs only so when we go for in rise time budget and when we go for rise time budget in that rise time budget material dispersion or group velocity so group velocity dispersion loss is nothing but what are the materials we are using uh, in that uh, uh, manufacturing of optical fiber based on that also we are getting some losses is nothing but group velocity and modal dispersion the wave is transmitted in different modes so in the transmission also we are getting some losses so modal dispersion loss transmitter losses and receiver uh, receiving section loss so these losses are comes under in rise time budget so how to calculate the um, rise time budget and link power budget so here for that in the two conditions the calculation of rise time budget and um, uh, link power budget we need to connect the dispersion we need to consider for link power budget here laser and led sources are laser and led across the transmitter side uh, losses are depending on these uh, uh, so uh, sources only laser and led what are the materials we are using the fabrication of source source devices and what are the materials we are using the fabrication of uh, detector side based on that the losses will be occurred and uh, depending on optical fiber length the number of splices are required so number of splices increases means uh, some losses uh, increases also and connectors across the transmitters and receiver side also we are using connector so these uh, um, what are the materials we are using here in for to communication from uh, what are the materials we are using to communicate the information from source to destination in that the basic components are uh, optical sources connectors and splices connectors and splices so based on this we are calculating the link power budget we are calculating the link power budget so for this case the formula for link power budget here splices connector losses plus splice losses plus uh, source power and receiver power plus system margin so these all losses are uh, adding of these all losses are nothing but link power budget here number of splices we required means here the formula is total length here the total length for example 10 kilometers divided by 2 minus 1 is nothing but 4 4 no, 4 splices are required so like this we calculate the link power budget so like this calculate the link power budget and rise time budget i will explain in next session so up to here i explained the edfa how to what are the devices we are using for EDF, EPM, doped fiber amplifier. So in this we are using, it is based on working principle stimulated emission photons. The core is doped with uh, rare earth ions and it is operates in C and L band frequencies. And here C band is 1530 nanometers to 1600 nanometers. L band is 1570 to 1610 nanometers. So in this we are using wavelength division multiplexing. In that wavelength division multiplexing, we are using length, dense wavelength division multiplexing. In that, we are using line amplifier, booster amplifier, and pre amplifier. So, next session, I will explain uh, how to calculate the link power budget and rise time budget. So, thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.